Hi, I'm Pastor Dave, teaching evangelist for Lamb and Lion Ministries. Here's a question. What did Moses do wrong? Why was he kept from entering the Promised Land? You know, back in 1947, a year before Israel officially became a nation again, the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered in various caves in Qumran, Israel. These scrolls were an amazing find. Their discovery proves that the words in the scrolls Jesus read from are the exact words in our modern day Bibles. It's incredible to have that reassurance. Now, when I visit Qumran, I get goosebumps because as you prepare to leave the site, the view in front of you across the Jordan is Mount Nebo. For Moses, the one God chose to lead the Israelites from Egypt to the Promised Land, Mount Nebo was the final stop. In Deuteronomy 34, the Lord said to Moses, this is the land I promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you will not cross over into it. So what did Moses do wrong? Why was he kept from entering the promised land? Really, how was Moses' actions any different than Peter's? Now, I understand Moses disobeyed God. I understand Moses yielded to his emotions while being frustrated with the people he was leading. But were his actions worse than Peter's response to Jesus in Caesarea Philippi? Or Peter's denial of Jesus in the courtyard of Caiaphas? See, on that day in Caesarea Philippi, after declaring Jesus as the Messiah, Jesus says to Peter, get behind me, Satan. Like Moses, Peter responded to the Lord in the flesh, not as a servant of the living God. Mark chapter 8 verifies the error of Peter's emotional outburst when Jesus said to him, you do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of man. Later, in Caiaphas' courtyard, it was Peter who three times directly and publicly denied knowing Jesus. This is all recorded in all four Gospels. Yet God allowed Peter to continue and to serve him for years. So why was Moses punished while Peter was commissioned to continue in ministry? There has to be a lesson there. See, nearing the end of their 40 years of wandering, the Israelites came to the desert of Zin. There was no water, and the community turned against Moses and his older brother Aaron. In anger, Moses said to the people, listen, you rebels, must we bring you water out of this rock? Then Moses struck the rock twice with his staff. God commanded Moses to speak to the rock, not to strike the rock. However, back in Exodus chapter 17, God did instruct Moses to strike the rock with his staff. So at one point, God was okay with this action, but then God wasn't. What changed? Why was striking the rock now just allowed, and why was Moses only to speak to the rock? Well, that answer is found in Paul's writing in the New Testament, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Paul explains that the rock represents Jesus Christ, who was struck once, i.e. the crucifixion, and out of which living water flowed and will forever flow. See, Jesus was struck just once, not twice. He died once, not twice. Yet, as our Lord and Savior, He continues to provide living waters to those who in faith trust in him. Moses made several critical mistakes. First, he sinned by disobeying God's command. He sought God, which was right, but did not do as God instructed. Hiding behind an emotional outburst or a moment of frustration, uh, it was not a justifiable response. Second, Moses committed another sin. He took the credit for bringing forth the water, implying that his and Aaron's work provided for the people. Now for this, Aaron also was punished. Moses failed, and Moses' failure did not really break his relationship with God, but it, but it did cost him the desires of his heart, which was to step into the promised land personally. Now when I stand on the ground in Qumran and, and look straight ahead and I, and I see Mount Nebo, being able to stand in the very land Moses was forbidden to step in is one of the most humbling experiences I ever felt. Knowing I'm standing in the very land Moses so deeply desired, but was forbidden from experiencing, is always hard for me to completely comprehend. Now know that you too can travel to the promised land and you can stand where Moses wanted to, but was not allowed to. It's a unique and very humbling moment. Now there are several lessons here. First and most important, never misrepresent the sacrificial death of Jesus, either in word or in deed. God chastised Moses and Aaron when he said, you did not trust in me to treat me as holy in the sight of the sons of Israel. When speaking about Jesus, 
always acknowledge His being holy, whether it's about His righteousness or His judgment. I, I like to challenge people to become contagious for Jesus. Let other people see how much you love Him and enjoy Him and watch that overflow into others. Also, don't yield to the temptation of taking credit for what God has done. There may be some things that you have worked very hard for, and it's tempting, almost, almost justifiable to say, look at what I've done, but resist that. And know that if it wasn't for the talent God gave you or the opportunity He created for you, what you accomplished would not have happened. Finally, always yield to the Lord and let the praise and credit be His alone. See, you may not physically ever make it to Israel to stand where Moses desired to, but by the grace of God, He has promised us a place that is far better than any place here on earth. And that's a place you can enjoy for eternity. Until then, all we can say is, Maranatha, Lord Jesus. Amen.